Yo, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video, and in this video I want to talk about system requirements in PC gaming and why I think it needs to get better. And I've been talking about system requirements and them being a problem in PC gaming for a long time now, but the reason I'm making this video is actually because of something positive. It's because some studios, some developers, publishers have come out and they've put a lot of work into their system requirements for their PC versions of certain games, and I would like some sort of parity with all games across the board but unfortunately right now it's a very minuscule amount of games that actually go the extra mile and offer that complete transparency for gamers and it's very important to make your system requirements understandable to all gamers like for somebody like me because I'm well versed in all sorts of PC hardware and I've been around this game for a while put it into layman's term I can usually make chicken salad out of chicken shit but still not everybody can do that and the fact is even for the most recent of game releases I've got an example for a game that literally released this month and its system requirements just leave a lot to be desired, especially when you look at other games that have raised the bar on what to expect from system requirements. And don't even get me wrong, I spoke out about The Witcher 3 system requirements. That's a game you guys know that I absolutely love. This isn't just me hating on games that maybe I'm not particularly fond of. The Witcher 3, CD Projekt Red did not do a great job with that game's system requirements prior to release, but at the time that generally could have been forgiven because that was kind of the garbage that we were used to. In Witcher 3's case, they listed the minimum CP requirement as an Intel Core i5 2500K, and a 2500K, in my opinion, should not be the minimum requirement. An i3 can run The Witcher 3, albeit not at the highest settings, but if you're running a game with minimum requirements in mind, you're not looking to run the game at the highest settings. So to me, when I saw those system requirements, that just looked like, oh my god, let's stroke our own ego and be like, you need an i5 on the minimum end of things, when that's not true at all. And the main issue with system requirements is most of the times there's no parity within games. One game's minimum requirements could mean one thing, another game's minimum requirements could mean another thing, and they have nothing listed to guide gamers in a certain direction. Now some games have been changing this and this is what I want to see going forward. I spoke on this a while back, but Sea of Thieves is how PC system requirements should be done. They have set a new bar for how system requirements should be done, how they should be managed, because they literally go over everything. They've got system requirements if you want to play the game at 720p at 30fps, 1080p at 30fps, 1080p at 60fps, 4k at 30fps, 4k at 60fps. Literally five different tiers of system requirements. That's why the minimum and recommended thing that so many games are doing, that is just a dated model to go by because what is minimum, what is recommended, and then you have this sea of things in between and there's actually no way to define what is in between. There's no way to define minimum and recommended for a lot of these games because they just lazily mention, oh, these are the minimum requirements, these are the recommended requirements, but what does that mean? That literally tells us nothing, but with Sea of Thieves, you actually have, okay, for this resolution, for this frame rate, you'll need this, and they even have it listed what graphics preset that you should use with those system requirements. Again, that doesn't offer us complete transparency, but this is way better than what we've seen before. With PCs, there's just so many different configurations that you can't cover absolutely everything, but how Sea of Thieves did system requirements is what we should be seeing more of going forward. And I don't want to give all of the credit to Sea of Thieves. There have been other games that have stepped up. Look at Final Fantasy 15 Windows Edition. They actually released a benchmark well before the game's release, so that was really cool to see. That benchmark did have some issues, but nonetheless, I'd like to think the thought counts. But with Final Fantasy 15 Windows Edition, they do have three tiers of system requirements, and I think that should be the bare minimum. You need to give gamers at least three tiers. Enough with the minimum and recommended garbage. That stuff is dated. And with Final Fantasy 15, again, they get it right where they list the resolution. They don't list the frame rate like with Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves is one step above in terms of laying out their system requirements in comparison to Final Fantasy 15, but FF15 did a good job too. At least they list the screen resolution, which is huge. How are you going to give me minimum and recommended requirements with these games and not even give me a resolution? That is just mind-boggling to me, but with FF15, they do have it listed for 720p, 1080p, and 2164k. And you would think that other games would follow in suit, but then you look at a game like Dynasty Warriors 9, one of the worst PC ports in recent memory, and I feel like there hasn't been enough bashing done to this game in terms of
of how terrible it is. The game itself is pretty bad, but then the PC version is just horrible, but the system requirements too, they are just so lazy. With this game, it is exactly what I hate. You just got minimum and recommended listed, nothing else. You don't get a resolution. You don't get graphics preset on what to expect with these requirements. You get nothing like that. And what's even more sad is on the minimum end of things, the GPU requirement is really what gamers are looking at. We also look at CPU requirement, but one thing that I hate, and so many developers do this with GPU requirements, I do not understand it, but on the minimum side of things with Dynasty Warriors 9, they listed an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 660 as minimum. At this point, that is a six-year-old graphics card. Not a lot of gamers are running that. Why not modernize that listing? Why not say, hey, a GTX 950 or a GTX 1050 or something comparable with a modern generation? Because while I can make the conversion, that's not that simple for your casual PC gamer. And I feel like this is such an easy fix that all that I can contribute you listing a six-year-old GPU in system requirements is just you being lazy. Now with Sea of Thieves, now this game has set an incredibly high bar for system requirements. It literally blows every other game system requirements out of the water. But what they did is that they actually have one tier of GPUs just for a GPU and then they have another tier of GPUs for your modern GPU conversion. They do all that work for you. So at 720p and 30 FPS for Sea of Thieves, they're listing a GTX 650, but then they also have a modern GPU listed as a GeForce GT 1030. And it continues to go up. At 1080p 30 FPS, they're listing a GTX 660, but they list a modern GPU as a GTX 1050 Ti. And they continue to do that. I would love to see more studios do that. Final Fantasy 15 actually does the same thing. We're on the minimum side of things. They list the GTX 760 as minimum, but they also list the GTX 1050. That just makes system requirements super digestible and super easy to understand for all gamers. Yes, somebody like me can look at a GTX 660 and understand what that means in the grand scheme of PC hardware, but not everybody is like that. Not everybody follows PC hardware like that. The majority of people don't. So system requirements really have to be digestible to the gamer, and with a game like Dynasty Warriors 9, a modern release, these system requirements are just incredibly lazy. And even with a game like Kingdom Come Deliverance and how much effort they seem to have put in the PC version, I mean, this was a game that was built ground up on the PC, I would have just expected better system requirements out of this game. They do the same thing where it's just minimum and recommended, and on the minimum side of things, you have a GTX 660 listed and an AMD Radeon HD 7870 listed. Like to a large majority of PC gamers, those GPUs are just absolutely foreign. Why are you listing them? Why not modernize them? If Sea of Thieves could do that, there's no excuse for these other developers and publishers to do the same. So yeah, at this point, I feel like you guys are understanding my point. I just think system requirements are incredibly important to PC gaming and they should be transparent to the PC gamer. And it's something that a lot of gamers don't complain about. About. I guess my audience, because they are more in tune to the PC gaming world, it's something they probably don't care too much about, but I'm just thinking about PC gaming as a whole and attracting even more casual gamers where system requirements have to be on point because not everybody knows how powerful a GTX 660 or a Radeon HD 7870 is. You should just make this easily digestible, easy to understand, and it just makes quality of life across the board on PC better. Again, with games like Sea of Thieves, with games like Final Fantasy 15, there have been a couple of other games too. They've really stepped up their game in terms of system requirements and I would like to see that across all titles going forward. It's not that difficult and it just helps out the gamer a lot. I know we do have things like Steam refunds which makes buying PC games risk-free but still that shouldn't give developers an out to be lazy with their system requirements. Let me know your guys thoughts in the comment section down below. As always thanks for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.